the object is turning. We did that in, uh, in physics 1, V equals R omega. Look familiar? I hope. If not, sue your physics 1 professor. Now, that's true for any other point on the object as well. Uh, perhaps point B, we connect the two, draw the velocity vector perpendicular, and then calculate the magnitude as the product of R omega. So this is R B C omega. And we could do that for any, any possible points on that uh, rigid body. Every point in reality is just simply orbiting around that center and it just depends on how far away they are from the center is how fast they're going. Alright, that's, that's review. So the deal is with the method of instantaneous center is if we have some rigid body here and we know how two points are moving. So some point here, let's uh, switch things up a little bit. Say that we happen to know it has a velocity in that direction. We don't necessarily need to know the magnitude for this method but we do need to know its direction. <coughs> and we know some other point on the object, point B, moving in some other direction that is known, something like that. If we draw perpendicular lines to those vectors, those two lines will cross somewhere at what is the instantaneous center of rotation for this object. It may be in general motion, but for a single instant in time, it's as if it's rotating about a single point. It's not unlike what we saw with the uh, a wheel rolling along the ground. The bottom, the contact point is uh, not moving at all, and it's as if at that instant, every other point was rotating around that point. So if we draw perpendiculars to these, where those perpendiculars cross is a, an instantaneous center. An instant later, that object will not only have rotated somewhere else, it'll have moved somewhere else because we're looking at general motion and there may, there will be another instantaneous center somewhere else. But for this instant in time, that's where the center is located. We can then use the magnitudes. I don't know how an object's going to rotate like this with the two velocities I drew because uh, it's supposed to be as if they're both rotating around it, but the two directions I picked, they're going opposite ways, so I don't know how a rigid body's going to do that. But that's the technique. I guess the easiest way to change it up is to just put A on the opposite side. That's what happens when you do things on the fly. All right, there, there it works. Now, now a, a rigid body could have velocities in those directions. Couldn't in the other directions, uh, not for it to remain a rigid body. Now we can see that at this instant in time, the object is rotating around point C such that the two points we know have those velocities. Then for any other point on the object, all we need to do is connect it to the center that we've now found. We'll know its direction, which will be perpendicular to the instant body. And depending on how far away it is, 
we can now find its velocity as well, now that we know the angular speed. So the, the sole limitation, really, of the method of instantaneous <coughs> center is, can you indeed find that point? Do you, are you able to do the geometry such that you know where that point is so that you can then use it for any other point? If you can't easily establish this point, it's very difficult to then use that, and it might be, in the long run, easier to do the relative motion method anyway, even with this cross products. But for some problems where the uh, geometry is straightforward enough and you can find point C, then you can use point C for any other object, any other point uh, on the rigid body. One um, quick caveat is that if you happen to know the relative motion or the, the absolute motion actually of two points such as that and well let's see preparing for what I want this to show let me change this a little bit I think that'll work let's see once we connect those or draw the perpendicular to those two points Notice that the point of instantaneous center, the point of apparent instantaneous rotation, need not actually be on the object. It could be off of the object, and it appears as if the whole object is rotating about that point. But the problem still remains. You need to establish that point C. And then once you have, you can use it to find the velocity of any other point on the object. All right, let's see how it would work for that problem we just did. We had this roller that runs in a horizontal track trying to find that velocity. It's connected by a link arm at 45 degrees. And that's connected by another link arm which itself was at 60 degrees. Now, you have to be careful when you draw these because they're there are times when uh, the inaccuracy of the drawing will lead to what seem to be a, the right solutions, but um, are not necessarily, it just has to do with the, uh, the illusion of a two-scale perfect drawing, and it, you have to be very careful with where you're establishing these, uh, these points. So, the... Uh, we know due to the rotation of this lower arm, let's see, this was A, B, what we call that D. We know due to the rotation of the lower arm that point B is moving in that direction. It must because it's in pure rotation about point A. We also know, however, the direction of motion of point C, which, I'm sorry, point D, which is in that direction because it's constrained to the horizontal track. If we draw perpendiculars to those two velocities, well, we've already got one because it goes right along that arm AB, perpendicular to the other velocity, D, would be straight up and down, 
where those two lines cross is the point of instantaneous center, which in this case would be <coughs> right there. So we can use that uh, as long as we can find this point. It's, it's uh, not too difficult. It's right there on D. Maybe if I drew a, a triangle, it's a little easier to see. So there's point C, there's point B, and there's point D now. We need to locate that point C because we're going to need to know the distance from C to D to figure out the velocity from the uh, angular velocity of that arm. Which in this case is, is pretty easy because the angular velocity of BC is the same as the angular velocity of CD. So we're imagining this to be a new rigid body rotating in that direction and that will then give us <coughs> the velocity of D. <coughs> So when we find this instantaneous center, we treat those three points then as a new rigid body and we can figure out then the uh, angular velocity as needed. So let's see how that works. Um, VB was originally found from RAB omega AB. And those were both known. If you remember, that arm uh, AB is 300 millimeters or 0.3 meters. And the angular speed was uh, 4 radians per second. That's the velocity of B. We had would have to do that in the other method as well. Remember, we needed that for the relative velocity of D to B. Now, we know that that is also equal to the angular velocity on this new uh, virtual real rigid body of DBC. So it has to do with how far it is from this new point C, which with the, uh, the geometry we can figure out. Might as well give you that. It's just a matter of uh, law of sine and cosine. We know that's 45 degrees. We know this is 105 degrees because that's the 45 plus the 60 of the two arms originally. And we know that this one side here is 125 millimeters. With the law of sines and cosines, you can determine that point C then is such that this distance is 176.5. So sorry, 176.5. And this line is 241.5 millimeters. So that completely establishes where point C is. And now we can figure out what the angular velocity then is of this new rigid body. speed of that, the new virtual rigid body made up by the instantaneous center and the other two real points is the velocity VB 
that we know from uh, the setup of the problem divided by the distance that point is from the new instantaneous center. One point two meters per second divided by this new distance, one seventy six point eight millimeters. And that comes out to be six point seven nine radians per second. Notice that the angular speed of this new rigid body with BC, even as it lies along the link arm, that line BC does not have the same angular speed as did the original link arm itself, even though they all lie on each other. The points A, B, and C all lie on the same line. So you need to find this uh, new virtual angular speed of that new virtual rigid body. Now we can use that to find the velocity of point B. That's uh, R CD omega CD which is the same as omega BC because they're on the same rigid body. The angular speed for any two lines on one rigid body are the same as any other lines on that same rigid body. And we've got both of those. That's 241.5 millimeters. And the new omega BC that we just found, 6.79. 6.8 is close enough. And so that comes out to be uh, 1.64 meters per second. Is that what the speed of point D was before? So no cross products required, but more geometry required. <coughs> So depending upon which you prefer, if you're happy with cross products, then the relative motion method works. If you aren't intimidated by the geometry, um, then the instantaneous center works as well. Both are somewhat limited, especially this one is limited, that uh, it only finds the situation for an instant in time. It doesn't necessarily work for the overall motion of machinery, which would be uh, probably just as important. Uh, it's very seldom we have machinery that runs only at one single little angle and does nothing else. Uh, because if it's moving, it's not going to be at that angle an instant later. You could make an integral out of this method, though, couldn't you? Oh, well... Yeah, you probably could. Just don't forget, an instant later, C isn't there anymore. So you have to find where the new C is. Then all those distances have changed. All these angular speeds have changed. Um, and then if you've got uh, an object with several link arms, it uh, even gets more, more complex. But it uh, doesn't mean it's not doable. Uh, we're not going to do it, uh, just because it is is quite involved. So we'll uh, uh, stick to just the more straightforward solutions at a particular angle and particular speed. Alright, let you try it with another problem we did on Friday. We had this one where we had a wheel that whose center was fixed, and then the bottom of the wheel was attached to a link arm. 
that was horizontal at the instance shown and the other link arm which happened to be the same length was also fixed on its end. Remember doing that problem Friday? We did it doing using the method of relative motion, relative velocity, and so uh, take a look at the same problem <coughs> in terms of the method of instantaneous center. I think we labeled that point C, but now we'll label it point something else. Well, you can use whatever letters you want. You're big boys and girls. Pick your own letters. Alright. So, that was the setup we had there. 30 radians per second. Each arm was 0.2 meters. And the radius of the wheel was 0.1 meters. Okay, and if you remember, we wanted to find the angular speed of the two link arms. Oh no, one the, the link arm BC and the wheel. CD, um, but also wanted the uh, speed of point C. Okay, so find omega BC, omega CD, and the velocity of point C. That's what we were looking for, I believe. All right, so give it a look. Uh, using the method of instantaneous centers. First thing uh, is to determine where the uh, position is for that instantaneous center and then determine if you can actually solve for it geometrically. So you can't find that point C or if it's way too difficult to find it, it might just be easier to do the cross product in the first place. Might help if you make yourself a, a simplified drawing. points don't move, however you want to note that. And then figure out where the instantaneous center is. So I want you to do that first. Show me where you found the instantaneous center to be done that, then you can solve the rest of the problem, see if we get the same thing. Show me where you think it is, and once you've got my okay where it is, then you can solve the rest of the problem. I need you to draw this one, David. Don't. 
quite go. It said there'd be at least one. Joe volunteered to be that person. Everybody else, thank Joey for taking the bullet. Yep. Okay, just be careful. Follow my very clear instructions for how to find the, the point of instantaneous center. Uh, each drawing, though, is a little more complex and so sometimes that knocks students off of, yep. vectors first of at least two points you know one of them including the uh, point we're looking for which in this case would be uh, a C I guess once we find the velocity of C the angular velocity of C D would be very straightforward and then you don't have to wait for me to tell you whether you got it right because we did this problem Friday using the uh, cross products tell you that BC is uh, horizontal. I think that's the only piece we had. Oh no, I'm sorry, theta was uh, 60 degrees. All you do is check your notes from yesterday, or Friday. Yep. Okay. Most of you haven't, for those of you who don't pay attention, Draw the, the velocity vectors for the points where you know they'll, the, when you know their direction. Don't necessarily have to know the magnitude. Uh, point B, because A is fixed, point B will be moving in that direction. There's just nothing else it could do because point A is fixed. Point C must move in this direction because point D is fixed. Once you've got those two velocities, draw lines perpendicular to the velocities. So uh, for B, that's easy. We just continue this arm AB out. We don't know where it's going to intersect, so that first line could, could go to any distance. And then a perpendicular velocity of C puts the point of instantaneous center right there. And because of the direction of the two others, we know that that virtual rigid body has an angular speed in that direction and you can find out what that is, maybe call it omega-2, because we already have an omega in here, omega-AB. 
And since you know the velocity of B, or can find it at least, since we know how far away it is from mid-center and that's moving 30 radians per second, you can then find the uh, velocity of point C. <coughs> and it should be the same thing that we had on Friday. Is it? Not yet. Okay, this, this geometry is fairly straightforward. Remember, this is 60 degrees. That's 0.2 meters, so you can find out the uh, find the position of point uh, point C itself or point I C. I guess I look at it fairly fairly easily. I hope. quite place that center point right. You see it now? Same answer as Friday? I don't remember. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Chris is going to give that uh, an answer to us in terms of square roots. Oh, you see that center now? Okay. Uh, draw perpendiculars to the velocities. The two velocities you know. Uh, it's very common for students to connect the velocities themselves. But you need to collect, connect the perpendiculars to the velocities. And now since we, we know the velocity of B <coughs> on the arm AB, we can then use that velocity on the arm ICB. instantaneous rigid body of the three points I, C, B, and D. Just for, just for that instant. So we have B, C, and I, C as a new virtual rigid body, instantaneous rigid body. It only lasts for an instant of time. Ephemeral. Is it just arbitrary to when you say um, omega CD, or could would it be different to write it DC? 
I'm oh, DC. yeah. That doesn't matter. The order on the angular speed does not matter. Uh, for the magnitudes on the distances, that doesn't matter either. But if we're doing a relative position vector, then the orders matter. Uh, the point being, when you find now omega 2, it's the same for any lines on that rigid body. And we're now representing this virtual rigid body made up of that uh, triangle and the two velocities that we know, or at least we know their directions. that comes out to be 0.4 meters, just the, the geometry on this triangle. That's 0.2, this comes out to be 0.4, and the third side, 0.35, or the famous 0.2, 0.4, triangle. And so now we can at the angular speed of the virtual rigid body. What's that come out to be? Point, 1.2, no, 15 radians per second? Which is, I believe, what we had on Friday. <coughs> is that right? And now we can find out the velocity of C. VC equals R IC, I guess it's ICC, because the instantaneous, instantaneous center to the point C, <coughs> maybe just an I would have made more sense, or E, or E, or whatever. And that comes out to be what, 5.2 meters per second. Is that right? Yep. Just what we found Friday. Oh, sorry, meters per second. Just what we found Friday. Everybody comfortable up to that point? Phil, all right? Connie, Joe? Joe, you know, like, what don't you like? You can still catch up, I guess. Ken? Comfortable with that? Anything? All right. That's not all that was asked, though. We also wanted to know what the, velo oh, the angular velocity of BC is. How do we find that from here? Want to know what the angular velocity of this arm BC is. How do we find that out now? David, David thinks he knows. Who else? I don't. Alan knows. What, look back at 
Friday's problem, and there it is right there. <laughs> but you watch the tape. <laughs> I will. <laughs> you will now. All right, David, pay attention. Let's see if Alan's got it. Give him a turn. Alan, how do we find out the angular velocity of the arm EC? Which was this original arm here? Divide the velocity of C by the distance BC. No. Nope. David? I believe it's actually omega 2. Why? Um, You're absolutely C. right. I believe angular velocity is a free vector, right? Yep. So, whatever speed C moves in reference to IC, B also moves in reference to C. As long as they're That's all right. points on the same rigid body. This angular velocity <clears throat> isn't just for these two lines coming down, it's for the entire rigid body. And remember, for this instant, IC, B, and C is a rigid body. So. This is also then omega <coughs> BC. You, nothing to calculate. It's already right there. Not every problem turns out that way. It depends on what's asked. For the angular speed of CD, the wheel, I think we did that on Friday anyway as pure rotation about point D. And that's why you needed the radius of that wheel. So which of the three methods is your favorite? I get the feeling we won't be using this one very often. Uh, well, for the types of problems we do, this method is, is, is fairly common because we typically do problems where the angles are known at a particular instant. For a general purpose, if, if you were working uh, on some, some robot, uh, some robotics uh, application, you're going to need no more than what it does just at angle 60 degrees. But, but uh, we're giving you a chance to get started in this before you jump into a fully paid position from which you get fired two months later. Because you're saying, well, why isn't everything at 60 degrees? It wasn't class. All right, everybody comfortable with this one? Joe? What was omega C? Uh, well, we now know the velocity of point C. Where is that? It's right here. Here's the velocity of point C. Here's the wheel. Uh, DC, we now know the velocity of point C, and we know that it's in pure rotation about point D, so we just do what we would have done in physics 1. But this is R, C, D, omega, C, D, and uh, R, C, D is just the radius of that wheel. So we can find then omega CD from there. Oh, I see. When one end's not moving, you can do what I was doing with divide. Yeah. When one end is fixed, then it's just a physics one problem to find out the velocity of any other point on that line. If, if we needed some intermediate point, perhaps there's another arm connected there, remember that the velocity of any other point you can find by similar triangles. It's just a linear function of the distance from the center. <clears throat> All right. Questions on that before I clear the board? Okay. Um, just to make sure we have the connection, remember we did a different problem on um, Friday, we had uh, a wheel with a center, a center gear as well. <coughs> and the bottom rolled without slipping, and then the top had a 
a rack running on it. Remember that problem? Yeah, it's very difficult to draw uh, concentric centers. Where was that problem? Oh, there it is. Uh, let's see, on that one, we knew the velocity of the center. And we knew the sizes of the gears, but I don't think we knew anything else other than uh, remember, uh, all of these are, unless stated otherwise, and I don't remember that they ever will be, are all no-slip situations that we're working on here. So one of the things we had to find was the velocity of the rack up here. And we had to find the velocity of a point there. I think that was D. Oh, no, this wasn't C. This was A because we use C for the contact point. And that was B. Point B. Right? That was the problem. All we had was the velocity of the, the set itself and needed to find some other velocities from that. Now, we can use this full method of instantaneous centers in a bit of a back doorway. We know because of the no-slip situation, no-slip condition, that point C at that instant is not moving. And since everything is connected to it, it's going to be as if everything is rotating about that point. There can't be more than one point not moving on a rigid body in general motion. There can be one point for an instant that isn't moving, but not more than one. Because if two points are not moving, then neither is the rigid body. So we can use the fact that this point's not moving, meaning that this, in this instant, everything is rotating about that point. So if we connect any points to that point, instantaneous center, the velocities will always be perpendicular to that. And their magnitude will be a linear function of their distance from the center. So we could use that to very quickly find VB, the velocity of point B, which is the velocity of the rack, because we know those distances from the center, and we could also use that to find the velocity of D at that time. And if you remember, we found out the velocity of D was at 45 <coughs> degrees, as it should be if the line connecting it to point C is also at 45 degrees. So we could have done uh, that rack and pinion problem that way. But if I'd given you this instead of the cross products, you'd just say, well, I'll do this and forget the cross products. And you wouldn't pay any attention. And that relative motion equation with the cross product is a very important one. Because we can, uh, we can keep uh, angles as variables in that easier, more easily than we can with this. All right, that makes sense, connecting that to uh, our old problem? Okay, it looks like you're ready for a get out of class question. We have a little over 10 minutes, so I'll give you a problem. Maybe you can get home a little bit sooner before your little brother gets home from middle school and eats all the chocolate eggs. Oh no! So he's already he's in front of the PlayStation with his belly and chocolate smeared all over his face. Uh, I hate that kid. All right, so here's the problem. Here's the problem. Me too. All right, yep. an arm fixed at one end that's vertical, connected by a second arm. 
and it connected to a third arm. And by the way, you are not welcome to point out to me how absurd these mechanisms are and of no apparent use whatsoever. They are serving their only use, and that's to educate you. So deal with it. All right, this is 100 millimeters. This distance here at the moment happens to be 175. So about 100 meter, millimeters is this entire arm here. Let's label some points, I guess. Well, we're going to be brave. We're going to go with just two, two labeled points. If you need other labels, you're on your own. And this arm is 75 millimeters. You could do it with the cross product. It's doable, but I think it's a one or two step problem if you uh, do it with the <coughs> instantaneous center. So, if you'd like, you can make a, a simpler diagram of it.
we're going to need two known velocities, at least their directions, depending on what else is given the problem. You might not have their magnitude, but as long as you have their directions. I guess it's possible you don't even know which direction for one of them. Not quite, Anthony. Start with two known velocities. If you don't get those right, nothing else is right. So we'll revisit those, Travis. Two known velocities. Yep. Alan? Yes. Got it? Good man. Where'd you put the center? Instantaneous center. Got it? Let's see. Uh, with this arm rotating and fixed at one end, we know that point uh, B must be moving in that direction. The other point is A that happens to be moving uh, about D because D is fixed. So let's see if that goes down like that. That thing is going to come over. That's going to go that way. And we know point A will do that. Right, Travis? Yeah. yeah. And then you can draw perpendiculars to those, which is fairly easy because it's already down existing arms and in horizontal and vert vertical directions. So you should be able to place point C right there. That's the instantaneous center making A, B, D, actually A, B, C, well, C and D are the same point, uh, making that a virtual instantaneous rigid body. And so now you can find out the velocity of uh, point A, angular velocity of AB and AB. <coughs> Got it, David? Yes, no? I believe so. Two minutes, still a chance to get out early. Go get in the lunch line first. Get out to recess a little early. All right, once you've gotten that, then using the velocity of B, which we can get from the arm A, I wasn't even labeled with anything. Uh, that horizontal arm, the 75 millimeter arm, we can get the velocity of B. And then once you have that, you can get the angular speed here, and then you can get the velocity A. 
ya no velocity of a is 0 0.043 second. The angular velocity of AB and AD is the same because they're the same rigid body and that's 0.86 radians per second. Right? AB Omega AB and Omega AD are the same because they're on the same virtual real rigid body, the, the triangle that we established uh, finding the instantaneous center. Alan? How does that give you 0.043? Yeah. It should be 0.086. Okay. It's just that, you know, 0.86 times 0.1 because AD is 0.1. Um... All right, one or the others, though. Oh, uh, <coughs> ah, check the numbers. Let me go home. Let's see, I don't know. Uh, VB is 75 times 2 is uh, 150 millimeters per second, right? So, then we can use that to find omega BC because that equals R BC omega BC. And if that's 175 and that's 150, then this is 0.86. So I had that right. That's that? Oh, just 0.86. 0.86. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> and then VA is R A C omega uh, B C, which uh, which is the same as omega A D, which we've got. Now. Okay. Yeah. So. So, uh, oh, I went on that number. That's why. So, what is the yeah. uh, top right, top right of the board? Yeah. Uh, 0.086. Yeah. 0.1 times. Okay. This this is the one we didn't we didn't like. Yeah. This was okay. That one we didn't like. So, what's that come out to be then? Point one time that yeah. oh eight six. You have half of that for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. Probably has to do with the fact that there's chocolate eggs smeared all over peeps <laughs> by paper. Yeah. yeah. Marshmallow peeps. <laughs> okay. Oh now you got a class late. <laughs>